Yeah, I mean, we kind of treat it like a sudden change. You know, sometimes offense is out there, turnover happens, the defense guys go out there, and then vice versa. Um, so, yeah, it was good. Good change up, came outside, thought we were going to be in the rain, went back inside, and still had some great work. What are some things you like about what you've done as a, as a unit so far, and what are some things that need to keep, keep getting better? Um, I'm loving the communication right now. Um, guys are talking um, all, three, all three levels. Um, every single group that's out there is communicating. Um, our safety group and DB group are doing a great job with understanding what um, Coach Harris is trying to teach us and, and applying it to the field. You mentioned that communication as a safety uh, quarterback in the secondary. How personally do you take it to be like that? Uh, very personal. I mean, me and KB, like you said, we, we think you're the quarterbacks. We feel like we're the quarterbacks of the defense. So when we go out there, we got to make sure that guys, you know, they trust us. They trust what we say. And if we see something, we try to help them out. You know, they listen to us, which is and good. And watching you guys and, and practice, like it's, it's almost like a wave, the relay mm -hmm. of, of, of play calls. How do you guys get to a point where that's done? Clear and precise. Uh, we only we'll know our, we'll have a test when we get come to game day and the crowd's going loud and we can't physically or we can't physically hear each other when we just kind of have that that communication where we might not be able to hear the call but you have to understand that this is the game plan and that's what we're doing. Amani Shane mentioned how Harold is on the defense. He's one of the guys setting the standard <coughs> for uh, effort and intensity. Uh, from your vantage point in the back end, how is his? presence now that he's going to be back for you guys, how, how is his imprint felt uh, in the defense? I mean, you, you, you can feel it. I mean, you can tell by the quarterback's clock, is, is, it's, it's running. Um, whenever he's in the game, you can just feel his energy. Um, he's making plays in the run game, in the pass game. Um, whenever Harold's out there, you know, we're a lot better as a defense. And on the other side, when you've got Arden Key on that other side, what's he seems to be bringing to that front as well? Um, another player that makes plays, playmaker. Um, he's a high energy player, high effort player. I mean, ever since he's got here, he's energies from 6 a.m. until we leave the building. So he's a guy that we definitely needed, and he's going to help us out a lot. You see it's different from Christian Fulton this year, maybe than the last couple of years. Uh, I think confidence. I mean, he, he's going into year four, I think, for him. So his confidence is high. He's, he's played against best receivers in the league. So he understands his capabilities, and he's applying it into, into camp so far. You talked about your relationship with Kevin Byard. Mm -hmm. Like the quarterbacks, like you say, of that secondary. Do you ever kind of sit back and say how cool this is to have a guy that you played with for a while now, and how you guys can continue to push yourself? Like, what's that like? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I just feel like I try and think about it when I was a kid and picture myself in the situation, and, and I'm in a great situation, and I'm very blessed to have a, a great teammate like KB, and to be going into my fifth year and my fifth year being his teammate. I mean, it's awesome. I can't have asked for anything better, and we just got to go out there and, and put it to the field. You had the concussion issues last year. Was there anything you could do strength-wise or technology-wise to, to help protect yourself this year? I mean, just when I go in for a tackle, maybe keep my head up a little more instead of you know, going in head down. Um, I mean, sometimes it just happens. You get hit in the right spot. It might not take a lot to, to you know, cause a concussion. But, I mean, I'm going to still be aggressive. Um, just you know, keep my head up a little more on the tackles. What's the biggest thing Chris Harris has brought to this? Um, energy, confidence, um, guys are, are believing in themselves. Um, even if it's a bad day, um, it's still going to be a good day because we can learn from those mistakes. You know, if someone makes a mistake, everyone in the room should learn from the correction that Coach Harris is making to that one player. So it's not a repeated mistake after over and over again. What's the biggest difference for you in year five at training camp as opposed to what you were like in year, in year one or two? What's, what's easier and or harder or what do you try to accomplish more? Um, I, I feel like I've seen a lot of things. Um, I understand when offenses come out in certain formations, I'm able to, to break it down to one or two things they can do. Maybe when I was a rookie, I was like, they could probably do anything. You know what I mean? My eyes are wide. I'm just, just trying to be in the right position. But now I'm trying to not just be in the right position for myself, but help others out as well. Amani, that experience helped, uh, you know, <clears throat> fantasy football, you know, social media makes it so easy for fans to weigh in if, you know, if a player has a good game mm -hmm. uh, or a bad play. Uh, how do you handle it when, you know, when, when you get that kind of intense focus sometimes uh, when they're coming after you? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, you just got to focus on the team. I mean, all the outside stuff um, doesn't really matter. And then if, you know, when you're in the game and, you, the, the clock's running and the ball's coming your way. You just got to make sure that all the things you practice, all the things that the coach have you know, taught you and, and put a lot of pressure on you for, that you can stay calm and just, just be in the right position. And when the play comes, you make the play.
But during the week when, you know, it's, you know, the quiet time, you know, you know you're away from practice mm. or something like that, does it feel sometimes like you're just a piece of meat and they're going after you? I mean, maybe, maybe a little bit, but I mean, I don't let it get to me. There's just, I mean, if I was a fan doing, and I didn't play, I'd probably be the same way. So I can't get upset about it. That just comes with the game and that's what part of being a professional is. As a defense, when the team is able to come out and just establish the run, like how does that impact the, the mindset you out here on the field. You said as a defense, how's that? In fact, um, I mean, that's we don't want them to, to be able to run the ball because now they opens up the pass game. So as a defense, that's the main thing we got to do is stop the run, try and make the offense one dimensional. So then we can then we can take away a receiver who possibly could win the game for them. So you feel the run game sets up the pass? Game? I think the the run game sets up. That's when the, the play action fakes come, and that's when the linebackers come up, and then that's when they get the the digs and the the dig in routes coming in behind them, and that's when you can get big plays. I mean, we enjoy it because every game feels like it's a one score game. I mean, every game, whether it's halftime or right before the end of the game, it's a two minute situation. It's a one score game. And those are times when you can, that's when you lose the game. I won't say that we win the game on, on two minutes. You're either going to lose a game if one guy makes a mistake. We're going to lose the game, but as far as the defense, you know, we want to get on it early before the season starts, so we're not trying to scramble come to first game or come week week three or five, week three or four. Thanks, appreciate it. Thank, you. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. And you're trying to go outside, and there was the lightning, and you have to make a quick transition. Uh, how, is that something that can feed over, uh, you know, into the season someday? Well, we'd like to get the work in. I mean, you can't recreate some of these uh, situations and the opportunity to practice in different conditions. And you know, I'm pretty sure that there'll be games that we'll have to play in the, in the rain or the snow or the heat and whatever it may be. And so, you know, we try to go out and then be safe as possible. And then, you know, credit to, to Joey, his staff, and all the interns and the trainers and Todd and his staff and the interns that are able to, to get everything moved in there. And, you know, it's pretty impressive. That dedication that you guys have had to the run since you've been here, well, what's behind that? What's, what's your mindset with behind that? Well, I mean, we've got a pretty effective running back. And, uh, you know, again, there's a lot of ways to win. And, and we feel like that that's certainly an opportunity to, to establish um, not only an identity, but also, you know, the ability to open things up in, in different opportunities, passing game and screens. And, keepers and you know so that's kind of where we've been and it you know again you can't rely on it all the time there's times where you know you're going to have to be you know going a different direction based on how the game's going and but you know certainly um one of our better players is is our is Derek is our running back and you know that would be how you would try to formulate a game plan is to to get your best players the ball as you're watching the game take place, when you guys are really out there hammering the run, how do you see that impact on the opposing defense? Well, it takes its toll. I think that there's a, an ability to to win the fourth quarter, you know, and, and the cumulative effect and, you know, three or four yard gains and, you, you know, get guys running, you know, chasing the ball. And, again, it wears them down. There's not – usually teams have, you know, five or six defensive linemen. Maybe that does. And – Sometimes it's taken a toll on teams, and sometimes it hasn't if we're not effective enough. But, you know, and then the ability to, to, to mix plays and, and play actions off of it. What's quick takeaway, maybe, of two, what you saw two minute, um, two minute today, especially maybe on the defensive side? Um, I mean, it looked like they walked the ball down there with the first group and then kind of stalled when you need a touchdown. Those are tough. And I called a sack, and that's the decision I made. And then, you yeah. know, weren't able to put it in the end zone and then just looking for you know early on operation speed and making sure guys are you know where they're supposed to be running routes getting the communication from the quarterback so that'll really ramp up and we'll continue to do that I would say most every day that we come out and practice so I mean like I tell these guys it's like it's like a it's like golfing every putt's going to make somebody happy you know make it somebody's going to be happy miss it the other guy's happy it's like I Defense one time, offense another. I don't know what to tell you. Was Jamarco's block um, Gibbons fair game? I don't know what that means. What's fair game? I don't. Was I don't it, use those clean? type of terms. No, I don't. That's 
we're not we don't want to practice like that and be a penalty in the game. That's two two times that he's disappeared from practice early. Is he hurting his chances? Well, I mean, I think you have to just uh, know how to practice. Our, our, we, we talk all the time about being competitive and, and going to that line and um, certainly not going to do anything that hurts the team. We don't want to see that. How tough is that, Mike? Because, you know, a lot of what you talk about is preaching, you know, you want your players to be violent. But how tough is that to teach that and walk that fine line when you talk about it? You probably have to ask the players. I'm not the ones out there doing it. Mike, we just had money out here. There is a comfort, you know. I mean, they make all the checks, and that's uh, we've taken those guys out of there at times just to say, you know, let these other guys figure it out. And you know, there are going to be games where you know, maybe those guys aren't in there, and forcing other guys to make communication. But um, you know, there there is a comfort level um, with those guys back there, the way they communicate and their ability to to do different things and, and execute all the different techniques. Malik more this year operationally to make the right reads to compared to how he was last year as a rookie. Well, I don't think it's you know it does us any good to, to go back and, and say where Malik was or how far he's come. I think that he's competing. I think he's um, much more comfortable. I see a much more confident player, um, and therefore it, it, it's easier to coach him. I think that's been the thing here. It's just been easier to coach him because he does have just a greater knowledge, and understanding, a comfort level, and, and there's mistakes like every other player. But it, it, it's been easy, I think, to coach him because he kind of knows maybe before you know you, you bring something up or you know even ball security when he's scrambling and he's trying to leave the pocket and making sure that there's two hands on the football or whatever it may be. So. Um, not really focused on, on where he was, focused on where he's at now and, and making corrections and continuing to improve. And, you know, threw one in there, stood in there today. I mean, got the center and the, the nose guard and the running back standing on his lap. And he, you know, flicks it in there to Racy and, you know, a tight window and had to put some steam on it to Josh, who made a great catch. So you know, there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of things that are positive and there'll be some things that, that Tim and, and, and Charles would get cleaned up. Kyle Phillips and the, and the strength and the weight that he put on this offseason, is that strictly a durability thing, or is that something that you see showing up in his play? I mean, it's a violent game. These guys are, you know, working on the middle part of the field. And, um, you know, so if that can help them stay durable and be strong and, um, you know, help them out, I don't think it's affected his quickness. Uh, and his ability to, to get in out of cuts. You were gesturing that you were going to give the whistle to some of the defensive guys. It's being funny, but sending a message too that you don't want to hear so much from them about results of plays. Or no, just my way of having a conversation with them, and you know, everybody's into practice and it's spirited, and you know, they give it to me. I try to give it back to them. The guy was saying that Aziz Amani was saying that today was. A good mental test for the rest of the players, you know, starting outside and going inside. He likened it to a sudden change. Yeah, the, the distractions, I mean, they're all over the place. Plenty of distractions, how we handle them. You know, we can't eliminate them. It, we've proven that year in, year out, week in, week out. There's going to be something that says how we handle them and, and how we can uh, focus on what where we're going next and, and what's, what's, need, what's needed to be done next. And so, um, Maybe that's difficult for younger players, and you know, talking about you know having your knees bent and your head on a swivel. So things come up, and we adjust to them. So uh, knowing the guy that disease is off the field, very mild mannered, reserved kind of guy. Do you ever get surprised when you see the passion and fire that he practices and plays with? Uh, probably not. I mean, I think that that's that's cool to see. That you know, again. He's he's always kind of had that, and that's you know what he thinks his edge is, and it, it's certainly served him well up until now. And you know, being undrafted, and he go back and tell those stories of you know coming in there and having a chip on his shoulder, and and, and always trying to have something to prove. So I appreciate it. You talked about Chris Moore never getting tired. Is that pretty rare in your experience for a receiver to be able to to run and, and never show? Uh, 
get winded? It's a, I mean, it's a good skill to have. I mean, but also he's not just a, you know, he, he still can run. You know, I look when he, when we send him deep or through the middle part of the field, he can run and he knows all the positions at, at wide receiver and also, you know, working hard at special teams. So, uh, Rare, I don't know. You know, I mean, they're professional athletes. It, you know, when you're a receiver, hopefully you can run fast for extended periods of time. So I was talking about Traylon's now learning another position at receiver. How much does that help a guy's value when he can learn the other side? And well, once he does that, then, then you're able to move him around a little bit. You know, Timmy can put him into different formations and say you're the X or the Z, and, and they think that's probably going to – you know, help them, and, and there'll be maybe some new learning and some new installation. But uh, I think in the long run, if we can stick with it, I think it's just going to help them and allow us to, to move them around based on, you know, the formation that comes in. How's Harold been as you kind of ranked him up? Have you lacked the, uh, where it's just like everybody else? Just yeah, I think he's, you know, again, he goes in and he, he, to this point in time, I think has responded well to the work that we've had. And, um, Hasn't had any setbacks and conditioning looks good and um, continuing to add add reps and plays to his, his uh, practice each day. Say something that he hasn't needed a day off. Well, they get one every two days. Everybody gets one. <laughs> Coach, I was talking to Will Levis it's just about it's very rare sometimes to have two really dumb quarterbacks in that room really battling for a spot like that in the backup spot. He said we're such good friends and the quarterback room is so – I mean, how – big is it to have that culture and I know it's hard sometimes when you're battling for yeah and it is and I think I do appreciate you know their attitude and their willingness to to come together and, and communicate help each other um you know but also understand that when they go out there they've got a job to do and that's to compete and it's to to help the team and to help their situation and you know I think it's just a testament to them and who they are at the position and knowing whether you know, whatever they're called to go in there, uh, they have to go in there. Years ago, you talked about a backup quarterback and compared it to a relief pitcher finishing a game, coming in for the starter. Do you coach it differently with young guys right now battling for that backup spot than with a season? Yeah, I think probably it's going to be, you know, right now this is developmental, this is competition, this is you guys are, you know, trying to go earn a starting job. Uh, and, and we probably haven't gotten to that point where um, because they are getting, you know, we're trying to make sure that the reps are even and trying to make sure we know when the season comes that, you know, some of those reps aren't, you know, with the offense, that they don't get as many of those. And the preparation is probably a little different. So we're not there yet. Um, and so we're just trying to let them go and, and, and give them op you know, opportunities to go compete. Murray the first time he was here and kind of what was the reasoning of bringing him in this late in camp or this point in camp rather? Uh, Jimmy's played in the league and smart guy and um, you know with that willingness to to one you know we got three quarterbacks and so you, you'd like to have three lines because the more you, the, when that deteriorates then somebody's taking more reps and then more reps leads to potential injury and so I really want to rep these quarterbacks and give them an opportunity. And, and so we needed kind of another body. And uh, Jimmy came in, worked out, and did a nice job. Thanks, guys. That uh, was good work. You know, you never know. There's going to be a few games a year that, that have potential rain or do rain. Uh, so it was good work. You know, we were able to come get some individual in, uh, get some throws in the rain, uh, which was good. I thought QB center, uh, working that, that wet ball drill, um, you know, working, uh, working, throwing some, some movement into the, into the rain, which was good, you know, so um, thankful we got that work. For you, it seems like your production goes up on, on play action. Why would you say that's the case? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think um, it's a big part of what we've done here. And, um, you know, you want to compliment what you're doing in the run game and, and take advantage of holes that are created. So, um, you know, we try to do that and, um, you know, it's been su successful. Do you feel that the run sets up the pass or the pass sets up the run? How do you look at that? It's the chicken or the egg. You know, I think it, uh, it works together. Um, you know, the, the more multiple you can be, the more you can play off of each other, um, it's going to complement both sides. What's Chris Moore bringing to the receiver group in your eyes? 
Uh, he's a veteran guy. He's done done a great job for us so far. You know, coming in in the spring, um, you know, been in a similar system before, so I've been able to to get accustomed to that pretty quickly. Uh, he understands what we're trying to accomplish and how we're trying to accomplish it. Um, he brings some speed, uh, some athleticism, some juice to the outside, uh, which is definitely good to have. Rich points out that he never gets tired. Do you notice something like that? Oh, definitely. You know, some guys, some guys, you notice. Um, you know, after a couple long routes that. All right, they might not have the same same juice, but you know, Chris, he's he's the energizer bunny. He just keeps going all day. The defense was able to rake a few more balls, maybe than you would like, out in, in, in the sessions today. What do you say to your guys after the after seeing the film of those situations? Yeah, we just got to go out and compete. You know, obviously, um, as a team, you know, you like to see defense playing well and, and having tight coverage, um, but as an offense. Um, we want to be able to put those balls in good spots and then have, have strong hands and be able to, to come down with those. So um, step back and look at it as a team. You know, it's a good thing, but as an offense, as a competitor, hey, we've got to go out, we got to compete. There's going to be plays each game that, you know, are like that, where it's tight coverage and we're trying to fit the ball in there and the um, defender may have a hand in there. And, and the more plays that we can make and come down with, then uh, the more successful we're going to be. Not Yeah, they're working just like everyone else. You know, you see, uh, you see guys stepping in, kind of battling it out uh, up front, and um, I've seen some really good things. You know, we've done some really good things in the run game. Uh, pass protection has been uh, improved, I think, and and so those are all all good things. You know, we just have to keep growing those guys together as a unit, keep gelling. You know, because uh, it it plays off of each other so much. It's not five guys, you know, on individual islands. You know, those guys have to be able to to play together, um, just like. You know, receivers and, and quarterback. You know, they have to be able to work with the guy to the left, to the right of them uh, in the run game and in the pass game. Was it too early in camp to be that concerned about the pass protection, some of the struggles they had early on? I mean, yeah, we're, we're, we're five days in or, you know, five or six practices in. So, um, you know, a lot of work still to be done. You know, I don't think in any aspect of our team is, is where it should be or where we want it to be. You know, we're going to keep foot on the gas and, and keep going. You know, I think. Um, there's a lot of lot of training camp left and a lot of practices we have left, a lot of time in the meeting room we have left. So got to take advantage of, of every day, keep the foot on the gas and keep improving. Did you see Jamarco's block that got the defense fired up and, and what did you think of it? I actually didn't see it. I was talking to uh, one of our receivers and turned around and kind of saw the end of it, saw the, the talking that was going on. Uh, so I can't I can't uh, give my opinion on that. What's the daily communication like with you and DeAndre? He wasn't here obviously during the off season. What's it like during practice, post-practice, pre-practice? How much are you guys kind of catching up on things? Yeah, we're talking a lot. You know, we had learning reps today out there. You know, there was a couple reps where um, where we had to talk talk after the play, you know, one of them being uh, being on that fourth down play down on the two minutes. So, um, you know, that's going to be a process, right, as he comes in, gets accustomed to, to what we're doing. Uh, I get used to him. You know, there's going to be some some growing reps that we have where we, we got to learn from them. And, uh, now I feel confident we're presented that that same situation that we're going to be on the same page, you know. So uh, excited about about uh, how we are growing together. But um, there's going to continue to be some reps like that where hey, we're, you know, we're just a little off, and uh, you know, we'll be able to uh, to grow from it, learn from it, and hit it the next time. With Traylon, it seems like that that innate converse communication between the two of you is really starting to develop. That you he knows where you want him to be, and you know that he's going to be there at the, at the right time. How, how do you feel like that's developing? Yeah, Traylon's done a great job. You know, going back to the spring, coming in, working, um, and now now kind of switching positions and um, learning the other side and, and being able to move around a little bit. I think the more we can move our guys around, uh, the better it's going to you know make our offense. So uh, excited about how he's worked, how he's progressed, uh, not only as an individual but within this offense and and how he's going to help us. You know, move the ball and, and score touchdowns on Sundays. I know you said it was early in camp, but when is the point in camp where you want the pass protection to be better and you want it kind of solidified who those five guys are going to be? So as you said, they can come together and gel as opposed to moving guys in. Uh, the earlier the better, but at the end of the day, we just have to be ready to go week one. You know, obviously, um, you were here to improve each and every each and every day, and uh, at the end of the day, it's all prepping for. Uh, the regular season, and um, so when that time comes, week one, we need to be ready to roll. Ryan, what have you learned about Tim Kelly as an uh, I've enjoyed getting to know Tim you, you know, on, on another level uh, over the course of this year. Um, obviously, a, a smart individual, has some great ideas, some great thoughts, 
Uh, I think he's, he's done a great job of, of communicating his thoughts over to the offense, teaching those, uh, getting everyone on the same page, and bringing some energy every day. So uh, excited to, uh, to have him as our ROC and, and look forward to working with him throughout this year. DeAndre said the key to getting to know your quarterback is hanging out with them off the field. So have you guys done any uh, hanging out off the field yet? And <laughs> what, where do you have your eyes on, on uh, taking him to Nashville? Um, yeah, I don't know where I should take him. Uh, there's a bunch of good spots here in Nashville. I've got a bunch of good restaurants that, uh, that we like going to. So uh, definitely we'll spend some time together. You know, um, a little bit tough right now in the thick of training camp. Um, but, yeah, we'll definitely spend some time together and, uh, you know, spending as much time with him. Uh, in the building and, and just making sure we get on the same page as we can. Guys like Hubbard or guys like DeAndre who weren't here for OTAs, how much of the responsibility falls on you to kind of get them along when you're out there in my reps? I definitely play a big, big part in it. You know, I think um, being able to communicate clearly what we're looking for, um, how we see it, how we're trying to attack, how we're adjusting routes versus different coverages, um, you know, before practice and then um, Within the practice, you know how we're how we're seeing it, and then even post practice, maybe they weren't in on the rep, but being able to communicate, hey, to the room, so everyone sees it and everyone's on the same page. He's been on a two-minute drill stuff today. Why is that so important to get this early? Well, I don't know the exact stats, but a ton of games come down to to the last drive each and every year. Um, you know, we've been able to win a lot of games on on two-minute drives and um, put ourselves in positions to win a lot of games in two-minute drives. So uh, it's going to be a big factor for us this year and want to start getting that work getting that work now you know i thought we did some good things that two minute just weren't able to finish uh, you know down inside the uh, inside the red zone so um got to give kudos to the defense but you know confident that uh, we can grow from that some learning reps that we like i talked about with some of the guys down there and um and we'll be able to be better for it checking in on the new offense and how that's coming along you guys have the call it day yesterday how did that go getting you know getting the play call in with the new terminology and all of that Oh, it was good. It was good. You know, we were able to uh, to get a little bit of of play clock work. Um, so, you know, it's not exactly like a game, but um, got some work with that. You know, getting to the line of scrimmage, being able to have that as a factor was, was really good. Um, getting the play calls in was was great. Um, you know, excited that we were able to get that that call it call it work because that's what um, what the games are. And uh, so you get that that work. It's more live than anything. Now that you're in camp, I know you said after the surgery last year, you felt like you had a couple more big years left. In now that it's been your birthday, you're a little bit older. Do you feel? Do you feel like you still felt when you were 30, 28, or do you feel your age? No, I feel really good. I feel really good. Uh, you know, thankful that I feel really good. You know, coming off the uh, off the surgery last year, you know, obviously, you never really know how that's gonna how that's gonna turn out. You want it. You want it to be great and. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of work that goes into that, and uh, thankful that I, I'm at where I'm at, and feel like uh, the ankle is 100% and and never never happened. So, um, yeah. <laughs> now that I had my birthday, I'm older. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited where I'm at physically, and uh, you know, look forward to, to keep going. Like a young guy. Yeah, yeah, no question. You know, I think uh, uh, I'm young at heart, and I feel young, and you know, I don't have the the cane yet, so I'm good. Yeah, no doubt. He's come in and, and done a great job for us. You know, we're moving around, getting him different roles. Um, obviously, he's got a different skill set than Derek, and uh, that's a great thing for our, for our team. So, um, he's been he's been a weapon for us so far, and you know, excited to keep building on what he can do. How'd you come to wear number seventeen, and how attached to you are? I'm doing a story on numbers. Um, so I first wore seventeen my my sophomore year of high school. Um, I don't exactly know why I chose 17, but uh, chose 17, and uh, you know I've loved it, loved it ever since. So I wish I had a better story for you on on why I chose 17. Um, my dad wore 10, and so I wanted to be number 10. Uh, 10 wasn't available; it was a senior that was in 10. So I chose 17. Then my junior and senior year, I wore 10. And then I got to A&M, um, went back to 17. So uh, we don't have a great story for you there, but uh, that's how it went. Uh, what's tougher, throwing in the rain or flying in the rain? Uh, <laughs> um, you know, f f as long as it's a light rain, flying's uh, flying's all right. You know, there's a lot of things that aren't all right with with thunderstorms and things like that with flying. But uh, you know, I don't mind I don't mind throwing in the rain. Like I said, good work good work out here today, and 
you know, either one, uh, as long as it's light, it's not too bad. You've become a, a pilot, but have you, over your career, had a teammate or somebody that was just absolutely terrified of being in a, in a plane and, <laughs> and white-knuckled it through a trip? Yeah, no question. There's been some guys over the years, especially, you know, you hit some turbulence, everyone else is joking around, and they're not. They're in a full sweat and, and gripping the uh, the armrest and seat belt, tighten down as tight as it can go, and, and you know, the blank look on the face. So, um, you know, you feel for those guys whenever they get in those situations. Um, thankfully, We'll see how these rookies are. I haven't flown with them yet. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.